We're recording now. All right, thank you. I assume the antitrust policy notice is on display. Hello everyone, this is Arno. I'm on the phone today, so I can't see, but uh, I assume the uh, antitrust policy notice is being displayed. This meeting is open to everyone. You're welcome to attend and participate. However, we need you to be aware of the antitrust policy notice, as well as the code of conduct, which basically requests that uh, you behave. So, with that further ado, I would like to get started. We have a pretty packed agenda. Um, there are things that uh, I think are important that we get uh, to discuss. So, Dave, you actually have, and I apologize, we didn't have a chance to sync up on exactly the, the intent was. I saw, as I said on the chat, you had uh, inserted an announcement on the community calendar reorg stuff, but it wasn't published. And when I made a change, it pushed the publication of your change. And I don't know if you actually intended this to be on the agenda or not as a result. Dave? And you might be on mute. Is Dave double muted or something? He's got two different accounts open. So we can't hear you right now, Dave, whichever one you're happening to be using. Do you want me to unmute you? I'll unmute him there. Dave, are you there? I think he has to join for audio. Um, but both of them have the mics showing for Dave. He's got two different logins and both have the mic unslashed. Well, let's not. Hopefully he's going to figure it out, but uh, let's go to the quarterly reports. We can get back to that next if Dave manages to, to get heard. There were three quarterly reports uh, filed. Thank you all for doing your homework. The first one is the Performance and Scalability Working Group, which basically states that nothing much is happening, but we have uh, actually some discussion going on as to what the working group should become anyway. I mean, working groups in general, which would impact the Performance and Scalability Working Group. Um, I don't know that there is much else to say. Mark, are you on? Do you want to say anything? No, I, I, I am on. Um, I was, you know, we've looked at doing, defining metrics for um, Providence use cases for supply chain, but um, we haven't been able to get a lot of people interested in doing that. And so we've sort of been, uh, meandering about trying to get that done but it's hard we only have two or three people working on it so anxious to hear you know the, we've had lots of more people contributing when we have like the fast fabric people come talk to us or something like that so definitely interested in figuring out you know what this reboot would would look like and how we can get people interested in performance and scalability again Right, and and quite frankly, I mean, I'll repeat what I've said before, is that there is nothing wrong in declaring victory and say, okay, there doesn't seem to be any impetus behind this now. We just close it and, and tell somebody else says, hey, I want to do this. Is there enough people interested that we can start a new effort? I think we could just close it off. But, but. Well, I, I think there's interest in still being able to review papers and things like that. I know there's uh, another fabric paper out that I want, that I'm reviewing and, and want to figure out how we can share publicly um, on the website. So okay. the idea of a, you know, SIG, whether it be technical SIG or we go under the other, under the other umbrella. Yeah, um, okay. So then we just leave it alone for now. Yeah, if there's no deliverables, it's easier to, Yep. All right, thank you. Any no questions for Mark? 
So on, uh, <laughs> and I guess this is all, again, it comes back to the whole, okay, so now we have SIGs or T-SIGs or whatever we call them. And we aren't yet settled on whether they produce anything, but I think it's a different story comes when somebody comes in with a paper that they would like to be published somehow or other through Hyperledger. Now, whether that's, you know, is it more than a blog? Is it, you know, is it, um, uh, I, I, I guess that, that then becomes a question for, well, how does something like that get processed? Is that something we should be channeling through marketing? Although again, I guess it's, it's, it's not really marketing, it's a technical paper. Uh, or that's you know the kind of thing that I'm thinking about, and um, so then the question becomes: Do they send it to the to the TSC, and the TSC decides? I, yeah, that's an interesting question, question, Chris. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I think you know, I I don't want to get into this now. We are just going over the quarterly reports, but I do agree with you that this is an interesting question. Is that's really the intent that some, I mean, some people have that intent to publish papers, we should definitely have an open issue and discuss what, what the process is. Yeah. All right, let's move forward then. Hyperledger Transact. So there was a report uh, filed. I added the review section that was missing. Many people have checked their boxes. There was one question from Mark. Yeah, this is Mark Ford. I'm actually on the call if people have questions. I may not be able to answer them all, but I did put the uh, um, report up yesterday and I apologize for the lateness of doing that. So I'm glad to see so many people still manage to have a chance to glance through it. Um, you typically like to get these things done a little bit more on time. Yeah, but thank you for, for doing it anyway. And uh, there was a question from Mark Wagner. I don't know if you had a chance to see that. He put that as a comment to the- Yeah, so I see it asking if anybody was tracking CVE um, issues. Uh, that's something I, uh, um, I don't know. I, I haven't seen any, any specific tickets in JIRA um, that fit that description, but I will check in with the team here and that would be something that uh, uh, could be um, responded to on the transact channel on Rocket Chat where most of our conversations occur. Okay, so Mark Wagner. Yes. Do, you, do you want more than that? I mean. That's no, all I just have to offer. <laughs> Yes, I just saw the question this morning for the meeting. Yeah, no, I don't know that there's any outstanding CVEs right now, but I know some of the earlier Linux CVEs were due to the hardware sure. that they're basing their product on, so or this okay. project on. So. I'll throw that past some of the usual suspects here and see if we can get a response out on the transaction channel, if that helps. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions regarding Transact? If none, let's move uh, forward. Uh, so, sorry, uh, no, just a very quick one, but uh, because there's a, um, there's a link, this is Angelo, um, but the, the, is there any example available on how to use Transact if it's usable or, already? This I don't know, because there's a link that on the website, on the Git repo that points to the examples, but it's empty. So will it be filled at some point, or uh, what's the plan there? You mean the the example um, on the uh, the crates release? Uh, but also in the GitHub repo. So if you go to the GitHub repo, transact at some point in the readme, there's written now. Oh, this is the link to the examples. Uh, but then you go to the example, it goes to another GitHub uh, uh, GitHub repo, uh, but it's empty there. Oh, let me go off to take a look at that. Yeah. Oh, so there are already examples available. Are there examples of working transact? Yes. Yeah. So, Mark, he's referring to the transact contrib repo that we currently don't have anything in, but where things will get put into eventually. Yeah, I think that really is it. Eventually, we will put some things in there. 
Is there a day or do you are already planning on that or by the end of the year, next uh, quarter, first quarter uh, next year? I'll have to follow up on that. I don't have an update. Um, okay. okay. Thanks much. I know, I mean, under Project Health, we talk about a couple of items that are starting to make use of it, like the Lipsop Tooth Library is starting to make use of it. So that'd be an example, even though it's just simply using the Rust Crate um, yeah. uh, library um, for that. Um, and then uh, the new uh, open source Splinter um, is leveraging some pieces there. But as far as something that would actually fit in the definition of that example, um, I'll have to follow up on that associated with the link that was just pointed out. Okay, so that's the the correct. The, so there are other projects that are using pieces of it, not the entire uh, transact. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The idea is really to grow with that component, and that grunt would um, grow um, in alignment with those other efforts. But yeah, as far as like a standalone transact example, um, that's something um, we'll have to follow up on. Got it. Thanks much. Okay. Hope that one, helps. Yeah. One, one reason we. Recently, a contrib repo in Apex Hyperledger project was that we were ending up with two different kinds of examples. One is a um, and background noise, but uh, when the when the core maintainer team creates examples, then those were typically in a regular repo that was maintained along with the project. But then often there would be contributions of, of things that were maybe a degree removed by teams fully uh, separate from from the the core project team and so those might not track as closely uh, with project. so that, that's sort of the background behind having a contrib repo as opposed to just having an integrated examples directory in the main Anything else? All right. I guess not. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you. So the last report was for the Cello project. Um, seems like a lot of people reviewed it, and uh, there is no issue raised by the project, and no question asked by any of the TSC members. So. I assume we are good. Anybody else wants to bring up any issue related to Cello now? Um, so I guess maybe I do, uh, as I was just scrolling through this again. I noticed uh, version 1.0 release. Um, is that a planned release? Is that already been released? Because obviously I don't remember uh, approving the 1.0 for Cello. Yeah, that's a good question. I I read that as something that was planned, but maybe it has happened. Because it says we are redesigning the architecture and finishing the features for V10. So I read that as this is they're working towards this. But Okay. Well, we we'll probably Do we know? Yeah. Do we have anybody from Cello here or who is somebody who is in the know? So, I mean, I, I think it's worth reminding everyone that, you know, projects should not have a major release with that coordinating and going through, especially for the first one, for the first major release, whether it's one zero or something else because you have the past that makes you start somewhere else, the first Hyperledger major release ought to be going through some approval process with the TSC. We have an approval process for that. We've done this for the in the past. There is quite a bit, I mean, normally <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, resources allocated to this event because there is press releases, security audit, all sorts of things happening at that time. And so we don't do that too lightly. And unfortunately, some projects don't seem to be aware. And we have already had one case of a one zero release happening without any, you know, any process, any approval. And there was no ill intent to just not knowing, but it's unfortunate. So we, you know, I'm taking this as an opportunity and I agree with you, Tracy, it's important to raise here for Cello. 
we they should be made aware and it's probably worth a comment on the on the on the yeah i just dropped a comment in there yeah so that people are aware thank you all right let's move on then is dave back on with the voice Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I am. Yes, hey. I can hear you now. <laughs> hey, so, I just wanted to give everybody an update on the, the community calendar switchover. So yeah. I've gone through all of our lists in Groups.io. I have granted moderation status to anybody who followed my instructions last week and said, hey, would you please make me a moderator of this group? Um, what we have left right now, that list there are community groups that do not have a volunteer to be moderator. And then there's another small group there are of community ones where we do have moderators, but the moderators are type of literacy staff. So they're like Salona or Rye or me um, that we would like to have a community volunteer. So again, I ask everybody on the call, take a look at that list. If you're a member of any of those groups and you want to volunteer to be moderator, being a moderator doesn't really do anything other than give you the ability to uh, edit the calendar and uh, potentially mute people who are being unruly. That's about it. So we should follow those steps that are crossed out. Uh, yeah, please email me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I crossed it out thinking that was last week's update. This is new week's this week's update. But yes, you're correct. <laughs> email me with your your um email address with a subject line saying please mod me and I will do that. This as soon as we can get everybody or all these groups with moderators, we'll move on to the next step. Um actually those with moderators, I'm gonna start moving on to the next step and having them move the uh, community events over and hopefully today or tomorrow I will get a quote-unquote new calendar new community calendar up um, on Google Calendar that you can subscribe to so that we have the old one and the new one side by side and we can start seeing you know what the status is of moving everything that's it that's all, all right. I need to say thank you very much all right thank you Dave Hey, Dave, this is Dan. I was just looking for a clarification. Do you want potentially multiple maintainers to volunteer? Or you just want them to coordinate a single point of contact? Oh, it doesn't matter. We can have 10, we can have one. It doesn't matter. I, I'm leaving it up to the group to decide what makes sense. Okay, great. Anything else on the reorg? Calendar reorg yesterday. Nope. Nope, that's it for now. I just don't want to confuse things. Let's just focus on one step at a time. All right. Thank you, Dave. All right, let's move forward then. So you may have noticed I made a late change to the agenda. It was purely structural um, in response to a comment from Gary, who just informed me, by the way, that he's been, he's been hijacked in a customer meeting and he's frustrated that he cannot join this call. Um, but um, he, he said it's not clear from the agenda what is expected to be voted on. So I have actually changed the structure slightly in highlighting the items that I expect us to have a vote on and things that are more up for discussions. I do want to highlight that, uh, that however, this is not meant to, you know, prohibit discussions on on the decisions item or vice versa decision on discussion items if the case might be if somebody you know sometimes we have discussion and we say hey we are ready to make the decision let's just do it i i want it to be clear for everybody that it's still a possibility we're not precluding any possible ways forward so with that being said there was one thing that we left out last week uh, related to you know the the different proposal that came out of the working group task force um, there were two related uh, proposals one was basically to stop you know to drop the notion of working groups as they have been existing and then to transition them to a new type of working group which would not have 
this requirement of having um, uh, deliverable, to produce deliverables. And in the discussion, you know, the point was made, well, it's quite expensive to change the name of these groups. And just like from a website point of view, all the information, we have a category of groups called working groups. It would be better off keeping that name. So I have actually put together a counter proposal, which went through some, you know, uh, uh, refinement over time, over the last couple of days. But uh, so, which basically says we're keeping the working groups as they are. We are merely changing the purpose of the working group, making it clear that those working groups are, you know, they, they are meant to be about information exchange and not production of deliverables. And so my proposal today is to basically you know, say no to the first A and B proposals and uh, to say yes to the counter proposal, which, you know, uh, there is one item that is might be worth discussing that came about in the discussion. So in the discussion last week, I think it was Chris, but you know, I might have been other people. Um, there was this question about whether working group could still produce deliverable or not. And I think Chris, I mean, I apologize if I get that wrong, but I think somebody at least said, well, it'd be clearer if we just didn't have that at all, because then you don't know what's the, what really is the difference between task force and working group. If we say task force are set to produce deliverables within a time frame, the, you know, maybe it's better to say working groups do not do this. And that would mean working groups basically are not expected to produce deliverables. And if they want to do that, they simply have to basically launch a task force, which right. for which we have defined a process now. So and it was me. that's that was you, right? Yes. Thanks. And and so my proposal states that in the description there is there is this implication is actually highlighted. Some people, you know, I think it was Hart and Mark Wagner said, well, how are we going to enforce this and whatnot? I don't know that we need to go crazy on, you know, defining a very strict model for this, but I think it's worth having that expectation. So, any questions or comments? I don't see a need to prevent the working groups from uh, creating deliverables, and it seems unnecessary to create additional bureaucratic steps that they would have to launch a task force. So I would be fine with just dropping that that last uh, line from the proposal. Yeah. I mean, Chris, since you're the one who brought it up, how do you feel about not having that in? Um, am I off mute? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, look, <laughs> we, we, we keep going around and around in circles. And what we're saying is that working groups aren't working. I, you know, they're not for working. They're for, they're for information exchange. Now, I, get, I, I don't care what we call them. But let's not confuse things by saying, oh, but you can create something. And there's no policing involved. If you want to produce a deliverable, create a task force. There's nothing stopping a working group or any collection of people on the planet from creating a task force, none. And, and so I don't know why we're going through hoops to sort of say, yeah, but working groups can still produce something. True, create a task force. Have it be a 100% inclusion of all the people in the working group. I don't, it doesn't matter, but it's a different thing. It's the thing that we're looking at as producing artifacts, not working groups. And again, when we think about this, you also have to think about, are we gonna be monitoring working group, you know, status and composition and all those things? I don't know that that really matters anymore, other than, you know, maybe once in a while they're going to need to have somebody else lead the thing and they'll come to the TSC. But uh, it should be the thing that we're tracking is stuff that's getting done and how, how well it's tracking to that. So we track task forces, not working groups. Since working groups aren't producing anything, they're just... All right. Thank you, Chris. You made that clear. 
Dan, did you, does that convince you or? Let me give you a, a counter example. So in the DCI working group, we have a few deliverables that we're working on. One of them is this community survey. So it'd be kind of weird when that's one of our main things that, that we spend our time on to separately spin out a task force that is essentially the exact same thing as the constituency of the DCI working group and then spin out another task force when we have our next deliverable. Uh, because this is an Why? example of the working group that you're, we you're, you're, have an ongoing set. But you're making my point for me. I mean, so what, 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 how is that going to be at all in invasion or in, in intrusion into your, into, into the work you're doing? You just submit us a, a request saying, Hey, we'd like to create this task force of stuff that we're already doing. And the TSC goes, humana, humana, and you're done. Why would I bother then, doing that though? Oh, for Christ's sakes. We, we've already, we already chartered that work. Like, okay, so here's months. the thing. Then let's just cancel this whole thing altogether because it's stupid to have an argument about whether or not we're producing anything in working groups and then say, yeah, but you can still produce stuff. I think the point of having some sort of governance structure over these things is that we avoid situations where there's poorly reviewed work. So if we had a group of people that wanted to issue some sort of artifact that was okay, then, then then let's call them special working groups or tasks. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. Okay. It's not All right, it's guys. not an information I, exchange. Okay, guys. I, I can see both sides of this. I mean, you know, uh, in Dan's opinion, it's like in the case he's describing going through the process of creating a task force just seems to be a stupid administrative burden and why do we need this? And I, you know, I will say, I think we're clearly setting an expectation with the task force. It doesn't really hurt to say, well, you know, not to say anything about the fact that working groups in some cases might decide to produce something, but we might need then to have something to say, well, how do we control what comes out of it? Somebody monitoring their uh, baby monitor or something there with the heartbeats. <laughs> What's going on? There's a thumping. Yeah, I hear the pumping too. I don't think it's me. I think one of the issues here is we're proposing that the work groups would not have quarterly reports and governance, you know, the current governance by the TSC. They'd still be under the TSC, but they wouldn't be required to do quarterly reports and things. Therefore, if they want to do a, a deliverable, then you need, you know, there's no way to report on that, right? So I think, you know, and that's what the task force would be. So, um, I, I, you know, I think that's sort of the crux of the problem right now is we're, we're saying working groups wouldn't have quarterly reports and things like that. Um, where a task force would be required to give ongoing reporting. So this is this is Troy. I, I, I think I'm still on the same thought as last week that there should be clear separation. So I kind of agree with what Chris is saying and I'm not so convinced that if there's gonna be deliverables that there wouldn't be governance. So I think it's pick one, like have governance and deliverables or don't have either. Okay, let's hear from other people. Anyone else feeling strongly one way or another? Um, from this is Swetha. From the perspective of the DCI working group, I I was actually thinking that this task force would help some of the deliverables, um, because I felt like having some more outside governance could get some of the work done. For example our survey has kind of been lagging for the last like month um, and having a task force and having, I feel like would maybe kind of enforce some deadlines or some kind of urgency to get things done at a, in a certain time. Um, and having a working group, I mean, the DCI working group is a little different maybe because it's constantly going to be picking new deliverables 
each quarter um, and maybe how we define a task force is slightly different in that situation but I, I feel like there is some value to having a governing kind of thing on the deliverable rather than the group. Um, All right, so so you, you're in favor of the task force then? Yes. Yes. I have to interrupt for a second. I'm getting a, a thing from um, Zoom that I'm trying to fix, um, but for some reason it's saying that I don't have a paid account. But when I go to validate, I do have a paid account, but it's claiming it might end the meeting in five minutes. So um, if that happens, I will try to reopen the meeting, but um, check the TSC chat list if that happens, because that's where we'll have to roll things over to um, if I can't get the Zoom back up. So okay. um, Thanks, sorry, but baby. Zoom's been behaving weirdly as of yesterday, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay thanks well, for letting us know that is right i'm trying to there. fix it but uh it's it you know just i don't want everybody to suddenly get cut off in you know four and a half minutes and go what the hell but i'm trying to fix it so okay somebody didn't like that discussion so if if we get dropped we'll please hang hang around for another five minutes or so and then check on the tsc channel Okay, Arno, you want to unmute? Yes, hi. Can you guys hear me now? So oh, sorry. We can. Talking to my mute. <laughs> Thank you, for Tracy. Uh, so, yeah, so thanks, uh, Silvana, for letting us know. Hopefully, we can keep going. Please do check the TSC channel in case we get dropped. We'll try to resume within five minutes. And if it doesn't work, then uh, We'll resume next week, wherever we stop. So let's get back to this working group proposal. So we've heard a few people. Anybody else feeling strongly one way or another? I mean, I, the burden, I say, you know, I'll, I'll be biased, but my proposal actually pretty much says that, you know, I don't know, you're on mute yeah. again. <laughs> what does the proposal say? <laughs> oh, shoot, sorry. It's my phone is playing tricks on me. So the, uh, I was saying, so the bias is towards the current proposal where working groups do not produce deliverables, and if they want to do that, they have to create a task force. We heard from Dan that it doesn't like that. Anybody else doesn't like that? Yes, I do not like that because of the following reason. Currently, even the quarterly reports do not get read. I saw that identity working group uh, quarterly report was put out one, two weeks in advance, and all I saw were three people from the TSP reading it. Now, you are proposing a governance structure in which you will examine the outputs from task forces, which are probably going to be more uh, than what is in the working group and you propose that you will handle it i somehow doubt it because of the performance of the people who are uh, in the tsc uh, don't get me wrong i respect you but you guys also have full-time jobs and uh, you probably take a look at these things uh just before the meeting and i've okay. seen uh, I that yeah, so, you know, well, so, so hold on, hold on, Chris. So my point is, uh, if you want to put this kind of governance on the task forces, like Hart says, make it very lightweight. Otherwise, <coughs> you're in for trouble. I have to admit, I don't understand uh, the, the, the report on the identity working group. I don't know if we missed it. It's, you know, it's an oversight. You should have brought it up. No, 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 you didn't miss it. You you were one of the people who uh, who uh, ticked off on it, but uh, several people hadn't. I'm not blaming any one of them. I'm just saying that, look, your workload is tremendous. 
But what does that have to do with the task force and the working group? So, yeah, so because because the task force is going to produce outputs that you probably cannot check very in a very detailed manner. That's what okay, I'm saying. So you're advocating that we don't do anything at all or something? No, 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 no. I'm not advocating that. But, but, I'm advocating but, but that. But I think we're missing the fundamental point here. Okay, and what is Mick, the I know you're on and I know you, you felt pretty strongly about this in the previous discussion. The whole impetus for this discussion was to have the working groups be more relevant to what's going on in the projects. And that, you know, having short term focused task force, you know, working collaboratively on something that is ideally relevant to more than one project was the thing that we would use as a vehicle to encourage more collaboration across the projects. And that working groups, while they were being very effective at bringing people together and having conversations and discussions and um, yeah, we, yeah, we well, may have just well, we may have just lost that whole half hour of recording. Yeah, I understand. I'll sit there and see if I can find it somewhere on my hard drive, but it didn't ask me to do the the normal save off that it normally asks. <laughs> so sorry. Are people that. more or less you back on? On the uh, in the hard drive when the meeting ends, no matter how it ends. So I said a bunch of stuff and I probably was speaking to my own. No, but we heard and you called on uh, Mick to uh, to chime in and that's uh, where we me? left off. As far as <laughs> okay, oh. and, and well, then I said I spoke for about five minutes and so. I got dropped uh, even before that. But again, I mean, it, again, <laughs> the whole point here was to find a vehicle to encourage more collaboration on specific deliverables, not on it, it, it's, so, you know, again, I, I think we're back at now square one because now you're saying, well, we still want to have working groups. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's a bit unsettling that, you know, we seem to have gone into a circle here. So I, I hear you then that, you know, it feels like in some cases it might just be an arbitrary burden and purely administrative, but you know, if we keep it simple enough within the TSC to get those things processed, it's pretty minor and might be worth the cost. Well, what what is it that you get out of that approval? Well, for one thing, I mean, we, we have this notion of having a, a timeline that is set with an expectation of an outcome and a checkpoint that is set by that which we don't have with working groups. And if we say working groups are in general just exchange inform, you know, information exchange uh, uh, groups, then there really is no way Sorry. for us to say, oh, but now they are producing something we need to be aware of or, you know, check on. So if I can just chime in here for just a second. Please. So number one, the, the existing, from the discussions we've had with the working group chairs who've been doing this, the most success that we've had in engaging people is when we focus on information exchanges on that. In parallel, the most success we've had in actually delivering things um, that have made appreciable impact on hyperledger has been through what we have informally been calling task forces. And all the proposals are doing is ratifying that what we've been doing in reality is the thing that we should be doing, which is focus the working groups on the information exchange for the purpose of engaging projects more directly, focus the task force on specifically on time limited deliverables um, where there's a beginning and an end and you can be held accountable for completing the task in the time allocated. That's it. Accountable how? Uh, it's a we all volunteer. The, the, the task forces that we have right now are all accountable to the TSC. This is the way we've been doing it. No, accountable in the sense if you don't, you brought in the. Then it goes away. Time limited. 
time yep, then it goes away. If it then doesn't you, get, finish well, you, you have one of two choices. You can either come back and extend and explain why you need an extension. You know, why are you not completing it in the yeah. time that you've done? Right. And and if lack of interest is the reason, then okay, we know what to do. Kill it. Right. If it's not if it is um if it's not done and there's no good reason, then the task force should end. And we have not been doing a good job of that with working groups. So focus on a task, limited time. If it's not done in that limited time, it's done. We'll just move on. And then, and the rechartering, this is really important because it does provide a sense of urgency for those who need to see the work done. Uh, in the standards groups we work on, this trick helps tremendously at getting people off the uh, off the dime and getting them to provide the feedback that they might not otherwise provide. All right, so given the time now, I would like to move and uh, either we're ready to, to make a decision according to the per current proposal or we have to postpone to next week and hope that in between people can uh, beat each other up into <laughs> into agreeing one way or another. Every decision so, does not have to be unanimous. That's correct. So I propose we we, we vote on the proposed uh, on the proposal that has set forward. Which which proposal? There were three of them. So no I said uh, I'm asking for I think they can all be combined because that's not where the issue is anyway the working we we say no to a and b and yes to c I second that All right thank, thank you Mark so anybody in favor say hi so, so hi. it's not on the screen hi. it's just hi. 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 hi anybody objecting I'm opposed. Okay, Dan is voted as opposed. Anybody abstaining? Hearing none. Okay, so it's hereby approved. Thank you. Okay, so we only have 15 minutes left. I have two more discussion items. There was the TSC election voter selection. Um, I, I don't want to get into this now. What, what I do want to say, so what, I, what, what it says on the agenda is the short version of how things have been done for the last ele election, according to Rai. I basically prompted him after the call last week and I say, so can we document what we've done so far? And he said, okay, this is the short version. We have Git com commit crawler from Tracy we have nomination from the SIGs and working groups, and then people can self-nominate self through a Google form. I, I think Dan has actually commented and, and tried to separate the two main issues. There is, the, there is an issue of you know, who actually gets um, eligible to participate in the whole process, and then there is the question of how we get contact information, which I appreciate. I think it's indeed a good uh, separation. I, my take on this is, this is the current process and the default resolution is the current process. And I, I would say anybody who wants to change this, the status quo, has the burden to, to make a motion basically to say, no, I, I think this is how we should do it instead. Can we agree to this? to this process to move forward on this issue so people can comment on the wiki as to how they'd rather do it, uh, what they don't like in this current way of doing it. We already agreed, by the way, that the nomination would not be done by Google Form anymore. We said we would do that through the mailing list. You have to post to the mailing list, say, hey, I self-nominate for the TSC election. It doesn't I think, talk about. I think, oh no, the self nomination is self nomination if you think you had a commit that wasn't counted um, rather uh, than self nomination to the TSC election. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. And we, we had a form for this that people use? 
Uh, I think in the past we did. Yes. We did have a form this time. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the process. So uh, again, I, I just want to, you know, agree on the approach rather than, you know, I, I think the, we're confusing things. I think the issue this time, this last election was we had a form, not the self nomination where previous years, everyone would send mail to the TSC list self nominating. No, no, but again, where where Tracy clarified the self nomination by Google form that this is about is about you know if you want to be added to the list of voters, which you know not not to the list of candidates for the GSC, which is a separate form. Okay. All right. I, think, I don't I think hear anybody. Yes. I was going to say I think we have some people on from Bezu. Do we want to cover that? Yes, that's why I wanted to not go deeper than that on this issue now. So okay. we have had this request filed uh, a few weeks ago now uh, from the Bezu team uh, on on their desire to move their project from incubation into active status. Uh, there was a fairly extensive, well put together, I have to say, uh, you know, uh, request put on the, on the wiki, and it generated a lot of comments and questions, some of which have been answered, some of which seems to be pending, and, you know, has, have yet to be answered. So I thought we could use some time, and we only have 10 minutes left, but let's please use those 10 minutes to try to see if we can move forward. I do have to say, and I put an extensive comment along those lines that, you know, I was a bit surprised this came that early, although the Bezu team mentioned that intention early on when they made their, their initial proposal for the project. Um, I had already pointed out that it would be a challenge to do that quickly. And, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the challenge remains. And it's been commented by several people that, you know, there's a problem with the regard to the diversity in terms of control of the, the project. Um, all the maintainers are basically from Pegasus. And this, you know, there's this question we have used before, you know, and said, well, essentially, if one company, if the project would not survive a single organization walking away, that's a bad sign, right? And active status has nothing to do with we had extensive discussions on that in the past. It has nothing to do with the, 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 maturation, uh, the maturity of the product they are developing, but really the maturity of the community, the project and its soul, how it's organized, how is everything set up, and whether there is actually diversity in the community and it's a fully-fledged community that's functioning. And it's often been the challenge for many projects you know, to, to, to achieve, to meet that criteria, because we often have projects that get started from one company or a couple, and then it's hard to grow from there, even with all the good intentions. So um, I, I think, you know, this is a point that needs to be addressed. Um, from that point of view, I don't think it's fair to, to, to put it up for a vote. I, I don't honestly don't think that the Bezu project really qualifies for this is the point has been made by several TSC members. We could have a vote down just for the sake of it, but I don't think that serves any purpose. I'd rather have a discussion. And I think Grace actually commented saying, well, you know, could you please tell us exactly what we need to do to, to be able to qualify if we don't, which I think is a fair question. Although there is a set of exit criteria that we have defined. And of course, you know, they have, they, uh, the, there is always room for interpretation, right? Because if you read the request, they think they qualify and they are, you know, an answer to all the questions. But um, there was another point I wanted to make, which was, I don't remember now, so I'll leave it alone. Any else, anything else, anybody? Gary sounded like he had wanted to say something at the beginning. Yes. I don't know if he's rejoined. Or... Gary definitely wanted to say, and I'm sure that's why he's frustrated not to be able to be on the call. But uh, we usually have other opinionated people, so 
I'm happy to hear mm -hmm. from anyone or from anyone from the Bezu team who might be on the call and wants to speak up. Hey, Erno, this is Grace uh, in all TSC. Um, just wanted to, I guess, point out that we're on the call and thank you first for everyone being uh, very thoughtful and uh, asking really great questions to the proposal. Um, just wanted to call out, so we have kind of three different organizations from BASU on the call right now. Um, so just to, to help kind of round up the discussion that way. Uh, so myself, um, Daniel Heyman and Daniel Farron from Pegasus, Anthony uh, from Denier from Web3 Labs, and then Bob Summerwill from uh, HTC Cooperative. Uh, so just wanted to, I guess, uh, you know, we kind of have these three organizations. Kind of, I think there were a couple of outstanding points that uh, you kind of hinted at with, um, you know, our request and, and what we're looking for to kind of help us uh, make the progression to active status. So. Uh, I think the couple of outstanding points as of a few weeks ago was the JIRA board migration, which is uh, the JIRA tickets have all been moved to the Hyperledger JIRA board uh, as of last week. We currently have the um, Pegasus one just staying open until the next week or so to make sure the transition is as smooth as possible and, and nothing gets missed, but everything is moved as of this point. And then the other one, so diversity around the project. So just wanted to say that we have um, now as of yesterday conveniently enough uh etc and bob was providing some context on uh their work and kind of they're kind of becoming the third organization there so i think yeah just kind of what i was saying happy to answer any questions y'all have but uh um the only strict requirement uh that i could see around diversity was the three organizations which we now have um so if there's a way to help us kind of if there's a percentage if there's a way to uh, help us kind of meet that requirement in a different way that's not listed in the uh, in the exit criteria, that would be really helpful. So that's, I think that's what we're looking for at this point. Uh, but anyway, I'll open the floor for questions. Okay, thank you. I remember the, the second point I wanted to bring up, which also is related to the governance aspects of the project, which is key to this active status, as I was saying. And I had noticed that in going through the GitHub repo of... Uh, the, the project that there was this governance document that basically stated you had uh, you had the dictatorship model and um, Can I speak a on that? benevolent dictator and I don't know what happened because I raised that and nobody answered. Can I speak on it? That point. Yes, please. So that was from the previous iteration when we moved over. We forgot to clean that document up. When you pointed it out, we deleted it immediately. Okay. So that's good to know. Uh, anyone else? Any questions? So, so Chris, I you, know how to quit. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tracy. No, no worries. Uh, so can can you comment on like when Orion is uh, something that you guys are planning to bring over to Hyperledger, or if you are planning to bring it over? Uh, maybe you're not planning on it, and uh, I think that was uh, a question that I saw that I don't know about right. a lot of conversation so, around it. First off, Orion is the piece that provides confidentiality. Basu does not need Orion to operate in an enterprise context. To get the permissionless and the permissioned ledgers, all I need to do is change the consensus algorithms, and Basu has right now three main consensus algorithms, the proof of work, the CLIP, which is a proof of authority, which uh, enterprises use, and the IBF TV2, which enterprises use. So we provide all the same functionality described in the architecture white paper that's needed for a permission network. We've got whitelisting and a lot of the other things. What Orion brings in is the um, off-ledger storage um, and confidentiality by way of only sharing with a few select parties. And that's not a requirement for an enterprise level um, enterprise level uh, blockchain. So basically it's complete right now. As for bringing Orion over, um, it's something that we've talked about. We haven't committed to it yet, but the one thing we did decide we wanted to go through was we wanted to get the basic code base in. We want to see what the bumps were, what the process was before we try to bring too much in. Because if we tried to, it's like, you know, how to get an elephant through a door, you get it in one leg at a time. So we need to make sure that we get everything in first um, before we start bringing the other pieces in. 
you know, there were some pretty big bumps just getting the basic code base in a lot of things like, like JIRA and Circle CI integrations. So a lot of that's driving why we didn't just bring everything in at once. So we wanted to get small pieces in that worked completely. Yeah, and if I can just jump in and add to that, Orion is just one mechanism by which you can achieve confidentiality on Besu. There are zero knowledge proof based approaches that are compatible. There are conversations about integrating third party private transaction managers and off chain privacy approaches into Besu. So it feels a little like one, one of the reasons for caution is it feels a little strange to focus on integrating Orion and putting it in a different class from these other privacy approaches. All right, thank you. So I actually, I was going to ask about this. I, I know Chris had asked about this. So thanks, Tracy. Uh, this is the question. Yeah, I, I think the other question obviously is around diversity of maintainers. I, I think, uh, you know, originally we had one maintainer who was not from Pegasus and all the other ones were from Pegasus. Um, and so, I mean, to me, that still implies that this project is dependent on Pegasus remaining uh, viable, if you will, right? Because one maintainer cannot take on everything that exists, uh, especially when they're only focused on kind of the privacy aspects of things. So uh, I, I know you guys mentioned Bob. Uh, is he becoming a maintainer? Is that like a second out of the, you know, 25 or so um, folks who are going to be non-Pegasus maintainers? Or is Bob just starting to contribute source code? You know, I don't know if you want to speak to our maintainer process, but so, yeah, um, I can yeah you want to go ahead. Bob would chime in talking about ETC cooperative. I don't want to speak for ETC co-op. Uh, Hello, I can, I can certainly speak. Um, yeah, I mean, we, to be fair, we only have one minute left, but you can start and I'm happy to, you know, to bring it up next week. We can continue the discussion. Obviously, it was disrupted today, so. But go ahead if you want to say something. It looks like Bob dropped off. Oh, there he is. Hello, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so yeah, I'll be very quick. Um, Chainsafe have been uh, uh, doing the work for ETC support. It, uh, it's pretty much pretty much finished. Just finishing on the upstreaming. Uh, the plan moving forward is ETC Co-op is committed to this code base forever. Uh, whatever Pegasus does, um, you know, in the majority, we would be, uh, you know, having contractors doing the work as opposed to doing it ourselves because there's just two of us. We are both engineers, but we don't have time. Um, you know, uh, capacity may be built up within the co-op or we may just give grants to other people to do work as needed. Um, but irrespective of the way it works, um, you know, that, that's something that will be a long-term commitment forever. All right, thank you. I apologize, I have really a hard stop. And so I have to close the call on this, but obviously this discussion will carry on. Thank you all today for joining. Talk to you next week. Bye.